Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for another episode of Inside the Markets. And a guest I'm really excited to talk to today is Jim Cook of Investment Rarities Incorporated. Jim has been a leading figure in the gold and silver space for quite a long time. Excited to dig into some of the history of the gold and silver markets. So as we get started, hit that subscribe button. And with that said, Jim, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing today, my friend? Good, good, very good, and thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure, and especially with so many fascinating dynamics happening in the silver market. Perhaps just to get started, how did you get into silver? It's a fascinating history, and then perhaps we can dig in some of the current stories from there. Well, you know, back in the early 70s, <clears throat> there was a silver guru by the name of Jerome Smith. He wrote a book called Silver Prophets in the 70s, and I read that. And there was another book by Harry Brown called How to, Come, How to Profit from the Coming Devaluation. And of course, he talked about gold and silver. So those two things kind of got me uh, interested and looked into it further. And then I thought, well, my gosh, this could be an opportunity for a business. So I started one. <laughs> Actually, when I first started, I sold silver out of the trunk of my car, so I'd be driving around calling on people, and I have five, six bags of 90% silver in the trunk of my car, so that was a tough way to go to start. Well, it's fascinating just with the different ways people get started in gold and silver, and everyone has their entry point. Um, and certainly, as a, before we got started, you were mentioning a little bit about how that led uh, you to become familiar with the Hunt brothers. And certainly, I think that's something, especially folks like myself who were born in 78, missed out on. But as you were getting more into silver and then the Hunt brother and $50 in 1980 came along, any thoughts or things you remember from there? Well, you know, the market got extremely overheated. And the silver price soared up around $50 an ounce. I was fortunate enough to have the endorsement of a guy who had the best-selling book, financial book of the time, Howard Ruff, out in Utah, and he endorsed my company. So we had an enormous amount of uh, business. And actually, people think, well, you made a lot of money just selling silver. But really, where we made the money was melting it because we had a good bank line and we could buy silver spoons and knives and forks, silverware and trophies and tea sets. I had two guys whose primary job was with rubber hammers, smashing uh, silver tea sets and silver trophies and putting them in the five gallon buckets. And every few days, Hanny and Harmon would pull up with a big truck outside our office. And we had coins and teeth and fillings. You can't even imagine much stuff. And of course, we could sell that at, at a very good price, and that's how we really made our, the bulk of our profits back in those days rather than selling it. Of course, we did sell a lot of it. We sold, not bragging, but we sold probably three, four billion dollars worth of gold and silver, well, almost 50 years, 40, 46, 47 years. So, uh, you know, we, we believed in it all this time, and now we think we're due for the big wave and the big reward. <laughs> yeah, it certainly seems like we're headed there. And I always wonder what it was like for the folks who have been seeing this for 40 or 50 years, like you mentioned. So given the things that have happened for years, debt loads are bigger, money printing amounts are bigger. Where do you see silver today? Are we, again, we hit 50 bucks back in 2011, now sitting around 14 and change. What are you, where are you seeing the market today? Well, first of all, I don't think there's much downside to speak of. Uh, I mean, is silver going to drop here? You know, when, I think when you adjust it for inflation, it probably is pretty close to the all-time lows. And, uh, you know, it's going to go down from here. It just I don't think it's realistic. I mean, let's face it, it's a super necessary metal. It's used in all these industrial processes. And, you know, it's not like gold. I mean, all the silver ever mined is pretty much used up and gone and the gold is still with us. So, you know, we could really have a big silver shortage here if any kind of investment buying starts to uh, occur. And very likely, I mean, the things that drive people to silver, of course, are worries about inflation, 
or some kind of a recession or depression. And I think we're on the verge of some economic distortions. Also, you know, we have that stock market floating along at super high levels. And, you know, here's what we tell our customers. Get out of some of those high-flying assets and buy some stuff that's historically low and use the contrary opinion type of thinking to your advantage because we could really have a big run in silver now and you could make a tremendous amount of money. I think, you know, I don't want to be too bullish, but, you know, 10 times your money. You know, our silver analyst and friend, Ted Butler, said a few years ago when we hooked, finally uh, hooked up with him in, I think, 2001, he said, silver can go up 10 times from here. And, you know, he was right. It was four bucks and it went to 45. And he was right. And he's been saying that again here, not only 10 times, but 20 times and maybe higher. So, you know, he's a guy with a proven track record and knows more about silver than anybody in the universe, uh, bar none. And he's a very smart guy on silver. And, uh, you know, he's, he's projecting an enormous growth in the value of the metal. Yeah, which certainly any time you look at the numbers of the money supply, it makes you wonder what silver would actually be worth. And as Ted writes about a lot, there's been a lot of short paper, which I don't know how that could be covered with physical. And certainly the recent news that John Edmonds, former JPM, uh, JP Morgan trader, pled guilty to spoofing and manipulating silver also mentioning that his supervisors were aware of it and that it was widespread practice at the firm, which in many ways vindicates a lot of Ted, what Ted was saying. So curious, any thoughts on those latest cases that have come out? Well, Ted has theorized all along and has sent hundreds of letters and missives to J.P. Morgan's board, the president, the CFTC, and the COMEX, uh, explaining that uh, they... J.P. Morgan has been short, and he proved that in a trader's report and the monthly bank participation report that, <clears throat> yes, indeed, uh, they have sh uh, shorted the market, manipulated the market, made a tremendous amount of money doing that. But what uh, really sounds unethical and illegal is the fact that they have depressed the market through short selling, but at the same time have acquired an enormous hoard of physical silver. I mean, hundreds of millions of ounces. So, you know, that smells to high heaven. It's unethical. And now we're finding out that they use spoofing to uh, depress the price. And uh, spoofing is just putting in big fake orders uh, that people, other traders see and, and react to and act on. And, and so that knocked the price down. In the meantime, they're buying the physical on the, on the slide. So, man, this smells to high heaven. And... I think the fact, you know, we always hear that the economy or this or that is going to drive the price of silver. The thing that's really going to drive the price of silver is, J, is, a, is J.P. Morgan vacating the short side right. and no longer manipulating the market with those short sales. That free, and then you have a free market. We haven't had a free market in silver. I don't know if we ever have had right. one. They're looking like we could have one now, and, and that would, uh, in my estimation, cause the price to reach a, what should be the free market level. You know, at the end of the Second World War, we had price controls on everything and they dropped them. The minute we, we dropped the price controls, we had, I think we had 14, 15% inflation that year. The price of everything went up. We have effectively had a, a lifetime price control on silver. And if that's gone, what is the real price? What is the free market price on silver? I don't think anybody knows. And will it overshoot? Because when you have a, eventually have a free market and it's been suppressed, then you have a, a, a possibility of overshooting as people come in. I mean, if the price goes up, I've seen it time and again. Silver's at $50 where people are knocking down the door to buy it. Silver's at $4, yawn, don't bother me with that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, if it goes up, people are going to pour into it. And we also have a little fear factor here with the stock market. And, you know, let's face it, we've been printing money till hell won't have it. I mean, we're inflating uh, our debts. And I mean, yeah. just think of the amount of people that are getting money from the government now. I mean, and the cost of keeping them well and healthy and people pouring into the country to go on welfare. I mean, these costs are they're out of control and it's not going to work. I mean, this debt is you just 
we're going to choke on it. And I think the repercussions are going to be so severe that precious metals will be one of the few things that anybody wants to hold. I mean, I can't tell you when that's going to happen, but I'd like to be here for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you will be. Again, I've thought for years that it was almost imminent and uh, here the years go by yet when you look at the things that are happening and again if there is all this paper out there and there's not the metal to deliver it what I've been wondering is are we headed at some point to the situation where either a the banks decide they have enough and say all right we'll let the prices rise or eventually someone shows up says i'd like physical delivery of my metal and they just simply can't deliver it and a short squeeze is forced that's possible um you know i'm not a good enough on uh the future's delivery and what have you to really offer an opinion i pretty much rely on ted on that mm -hmm. he's kind of uh, agrees with that contention that you're making now but uh you know that's not my area of expertise so I can't help you. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it'll be fascinating to see how it does play out. And, and another thing that you mentioned about how it could overshoot, and certainly you talk to customers all day who are in the silver market. My impression has always been that the people who really are buying silver and still own it at this point probably are not going to say, all right, silver got to 25 bucks. I'm going to sell it here, but are likely to not be in a rush to sell. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, I think that's right. They're long-term holders. And, uh, you know, there's always some selling. But even with these depressed prices, the buying far exceeds the selling. I mean, we have a lot of stuff out there. When somebody uh, passed away, maybe their heirs sell the silver back to us. But there's always a, a much higher outgo than incoming silver. And uh, so, you know, we... we these people that own and buy and own silver, and as with gold, they believe that there's a much higher prices ahead and that a lot, a lot wrong in the economy and in the political environment that would cause these metals to appreciate. But the big story is we get rid of that big manipulative bank, uh, that's going to set, set the price free. Yeah, and do you see the Department of Justice taking a more serious approach than the CFTC has? Well, they, the fact that they have already moved against one trader is that's far more significant than anything the CFTC has done. And there's something that we don't know about behind the scenes that has caused them to back away. In fact, one of their former uh, uh, big shots said something the other day about that, that they were prohibited it from uh, moving against the manipulators. So, you know, <laughs> I think that might go back to 2008. Maybe there was a deal struck. Remember JP Morgan took over mm -hmm. Bear and, and uh, you know, that all probably has some repercussions that lasted this long. It does seem like someone is looking the other way on some of these things because I can understand maybe not the easiest situation. In fact, I was just listening to Bart Chilton this morning. He talks well, about Bart Chilton, Bart Chilton is the guy that kind of uh, said that. Yeah, where and he was mentioning how he did think there was inappropriate illegal behavior, wasn't sure if he was able to prove it. Yet what always seemed odd to me is that if I were the commissioner of the CFTC and I really wanted to get to the heart of the matter, I would at least call Ted. I mean, here's <laughs> in the silver community, recognized expert with information that we've been offering to share this. And when they go out of their way to ignore the guy, like you said, certainly makes it seem like there's some political things being done to not get to the truth. Well. Ted, that's looking at him. Here's a guy who is an individual. He's not connected with any big organizations, and he's commenting and writing about the silver market. And now he comes up with this uh, scheme and reports it to them. And they are not the ones that figured it out. And over time, he just keeps bombarding them with with facts and evidence and information to the point they get antagonized. They yeah. now uh, they, they've heard so much about it now. 
they say, I'm sure they're thinking, well, we come out now and they think we're going to look bad. So, you know, they just forestall it. And, uh, you know, they are, in my opinion, aren't going to uh, maybe look a little, uh, maybe look a little bad on this issue. I mean, uh, my goodness, if it turns into the kind of uh, debacle that it could, oof. I mean, a lot of people are going to ask a lot of questions. This could be a front pager. Yeah, and isn't it actually really similar to what happened with Bernie Madoff's fund where Harry Markopoulos was sending the SEC information for years? I mean, he wasn't just saying it was a, a scam. He was doing the math, giving them the charts and everything. And in the end, they just didn't feel like dealing with them. So some similarities to what's happening with Silver here. Yeah, there are. Yep. And One I thing I want to just mention, if people are interested in finding out about, more about Silver, I could put a little plug in. Uh, you call my company and we'll send you Ted Butler's report. We have a really interesting silver report, of, uh, you know, probably 12, 15 pages of information. And, you know, you should do, people should do everything in their power to learn what they can about silver in the silver market. Because, uh, you know, if you have 10% of your net worth in silver, I think in the future you're going to be impervious to these significant breaks in other markets. And uh, it could turn into a really good thing for you. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to give the phone number. Anybody wants to call and get that report, it's 1 800 328 1860. 1 800 328 1860. And, you know, we'll just send you out the information and you can peruse it and form your own opinions. Yeah, and I highly recommend people doing that. In fact, when we're done, I'm going to call that number and get that silver report. Um, again, I know a lot of people are familiar with Ted. And a couple of times when I email him, he speaks very fondly of you, Jim, and the, the great things that you're doing. And I appreciate all that you've shared because it's not an easy time for investors. But and we will have the link and the number for that below the interview. Perhaps one last question and wrapping up. Here's a fun one. Curious your thoughts on Venezuela attempting to get their gold back from the Bank of England. And so far, the Bank of England basically telling them to stick it. We're not giving it back. What do you think is actually going on there? Well, that's a hard one to figure out. I mean, maybe there's some liabilities there that are under the surface that we can't see. And, uh, you know, there's such a mess in Venezuela and that uh, Bolshevik, they got running things down there. It's a horror story. And, uh, you know, they, they, you know, there's a big gold mining situation down there where they, jumped in and just grabbed the, the asset. Uh, they have no conscience. Well, uh, if they don't get their gold, more power to England. <laughs> yeah, which again is why it's good. And I appreciate how you recommend the advantage of people actually having physical gold that they own or that is stored safely somewhere. So perhaps just in wrapping up, you can give the website and the phone number again and any other services you'd like folks to know that you offer. Sure. Well, I, I just want to say that one of our prime warnings to people is do not let a dealer or any mint or any outfit or big brokerage firm store your silver or without giving you, say, let's say the thousand ounce bars, without giving you serial numbers. Because if you don't have the serial numbers, if this silver explodes the way I think it's going to, there's going to be a lot of pool accounts. A lot of big brokerage firms who really don't have the silver there. I mean, it's un unbelievable. There was a big lawsuit against Morgan Stanley. They admitted, we don't have any silver here. and uh, But everybody does it. Well, so that could turn into really a firestorm here. So, all right. So my company, Investment Rarities Incorporated, we've been in business almost 50 years. And uh, I hate to say that long because I started it, so I'm giving away my age there. But <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's our phone number is 1-800-328-1860, and we've got this great report on Butler, and we have a website, Investment Rarities Inc., and I just completed my book, The Great Goal Comeback. Uh, the, um, it, I, I wrote the book years ago, but now I've updated it and brought it up to date and expanded it enormously, so it's a good read on gold, and uh, it's called... Uh, uh, bankruptcy of the welfare state, uh, the great gold comeback, bankruptcy of the welfare state. So uh, we'll send you the um, silver report at no cost, but the gold 
that we want to get at least get the postage because it's pretty expensive to print it and mail it for free. So that's the story. We give out good information. We're tight with the world's foremost silver analyst. He's been our consultant for since 2001 for many years, and we have full faith in his ability to diagnose what's going on in the silver market, and he's been right on. And nobody, as I've said, nobody knows as much about silver as he does. So you should read what he has to say. Well, I sure agree. I sure appreciate all that you've done in educating people, helping folks who are investing to understand what's going on before it's too late to do something about it. And certainly I'd recommend folks to give Jim a call and check out the information that you're offering. So with that said, thanks again for joining me today. It'll, it'll be fascinating to see how all this develops, and I'll look forward to catching up with you again soon. That'd be good. Thank you so much.